Hello, true duelists. It's YGO Strat's Yu-Gi-Oh! Single Card History, where I'm going to be talking about some of the cards that have impacted Yu-Gi-Oh! throughout the years, and some of the other ones that just didn't. Today's card, the little bug that could and then did, Level Eater. Level Eater was first released in Stardust Overdrive in 2009 as a common, with notable reprints including the Duelist Pack Collection Tins in 2010 as a Super Rare, Battle Pack Epic Dawn in 2012 and Starfoil Rare, the Legendary Collections Mega Pack in 2014 as a Rare, and the Emperor of Darkness Structure Deck again as a common in 2016. For time on the ban list, it was unlimited and free at 3 for just shy of 9 years until the February 2018 ban list crushed the bug, banning it entirely, where as of this video, it has remained ever since. A level 1 dark attribute insect type monster with zero attack and defense, its effect reads. If this card is in your graveyard, you can target one level 5 or higher monster you control, reduce its level by 1, and if you do, special summon this card. This face-up card on the field cannot be tributed except for a tribute summon. Level Eater is one of Yu-Gi-Oh's countless cards that was just waiting to be abused. No once per turn limit, no restrictions on what it can be used for except for the tributing clause, and like countless other cards and mechanics, not even remotely designed with Link summoning in mind. But we'll get to that soon enough. Because Level Eater had 8 years of playtime before Lynx came into the game, and while it wasn't exactly the star of the show during that time, it did still find a home in some notable strategies. The earliest one I can remember came to be in 2011 with the release of Shooting Quasar Dragon as a Shonen Jump promo. In the modern game, Quasar is nothing all that exceptional. An Omni Negate and an OTK in one card, but that requires extensive summons to get out? Oh, so it's sort of like the standard Yu-Gi-Oh! end board in, in the modern day. <laughs> This game is nuts. But way back in the old times of 2011, Omni Negates weren't really a thing. Sure, Solemn Judgment was a card, but the notion of a 4k boss monster that could negate a dark hole and then win the duel by itself when attacking directly was something different and pretty scary. Relative to the meta at the time of what would become Dino Rabbit, Insector, and Windups, Zen Mains and Logia don't really seem all that strong once Quasar's on the board. But you'll notice that Dino Rabbit, Windup, and Insector format doesn't ever really include Quasar when it's brought up in discussions, and that's because Quasar was the type of deck that needed 15 moving parts and pieces to get to its end board, whereas Windup and Insector had countless two-card combos, and Dino Rabbit really just needed to see the bunny. Comparatively, from what I can remember of Quasar decks at the time, if you opened exactly Level Eater, Synchron Explorer, and Quick Draw Synchron, you could use those three cards with Road Warrior and Hyper Librarian and 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 to make Quasar. But if anything stopped that Synchron Explorer from resolving, it was pretty much GG. And shoutouts to my friend Cole for always having the fiendish chain for my explorer every single duel. Do not miss that. And that summed up Level Eater's role in the game for a number of years as a piece of the complex and solitaire-esque Synchron decks that some players liked to play. And while Quasar was a boss-ass boss monster, the number of small pieces needed to play it, on top of the extra deck space required for it, kept it from ever really being a top-tier competitor. Early Synchron deck bosses that weren't Quasar included the likes of, say, Ally of Justice and Ancient Sacred Wyvern, which, while solid, weren't all that special against the inevitability of Dracosac and everything else that followed 2013 card design. This ended up changing by the year 2016. The Synchro card pool had improved greatly, and while the core philosophy of the deck was the same, smaller parts used to make strong end boards, the type of end board being made was much better for the player Player, and significantly worse for the opponent. Because with the release of Psyframe Lord Omega and with Trishula, Dragon of the Ice Barrier going back to 1 in 2015, competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! would see the small rise of a deck called Synchro Fusionist that would eventually grow into Dark Synchro, what I would consider the earliest incarnation of the Dark Warrior, used as an engine to do whatever it is you feel like doing, in all honesty. Technically speaking, these were two distinct decks. Synchro Fusionist would use Synchro Fusionist to make its plays, giving the deck easier access to the likes of Brilliant Fusion, 
Fusion and Instant Fusion for extension and to facilitate making three Psyframe, Lord Omega, and a Trishula to rip apart the opponent's hand turn one and keep them from playing Yu-Gi-Oh at all. Whereas Dark Synchro used the Dark Warrior package of Armageddon Knight and Dark Greffer and Destiny Hero Malicious alongside competent tuners at the time to make three Psyframe, Lord Omega, and a Trishula and rip apart the opponent's hand before they had a chance to play. Can you understand why I might lump these two decks together? In both of these decks, Level Eater served the same purpose, and essentially the same role that it had served in Quasar Turbo before it. Its ability to lower the level of any level 5 or higher monster made it so that the player could level modulate to get access to the different level of synchros that they were playing, and serve as another body on board itself for synchro plays. Being level 1 meant it paired beautifully with Glow Up Bulb in 2011 and early 2012, and later on Jet Synchron in 2016 to give players easy access to Formula Synchron for an extra draw and as another tuner to make even more plays. Having two level leaders in Grave also meant you could bring down monsters levels even more drastically and suddenly a level 8 Synchro could become level 6, which with say a Formula Synchron, you've suddenly got access to a Crystal Wing to boot. And even more simply, level leader could turn one monster with 8 levels into two monsters with 8 levels, which when partnered with a level 1 tuner suddenly meant Trishula's material requirement isn't really a problem. And thanks to the aforementioned Crystal Wing, Dark Synchro was a deck that had access to a decent end board even if interrupted, with extra deck tools of 2016 for Synchro decks being a major step up from what they had been in 2011. During this time was the earliest clamoring for Level Eater to get hit as I remember it, with a sizable or at the very least audible portion of the player base complaining about Dark Synchro as a deck. But for all the might of the hand loop deck, it didn't top a tremendous amount at tournaments, and by the time Zodiac hit the scene there wasn't really a desire for it to get hit because, well, there was a new problem with the meta. And so, for a moment, Level Eater fell back into obscurity, just before Links were introduced to the game. And more importantly, Link Karibo. Yeah, Link Karibo was what really broke the bug here, needing only one level 1 monster and being playable at 3 in the extra deck. Funny enough, I can remember Blue Eyes being talked about as the deck that people were really abusing it with, which makes enough sense. Plenty of level 8 monsters, which means you've got 4 uses of Level Eater per blue eyes. Reduce a level, make a Link Karibo. Reduce another level, make another Link Karibo. Link them off into a Link 2, do it a third time, and hey look, you've got enough material for the pre errata Firewall. That coupled with enough revival spells that Blue Eyes has access to, and it wasn't too difficult to make some strong Link boards. But even if you don't subscribe to the idea that Blue Eyes especially was what got this card banned, it's pretty clear to see the problems that it can cause. Level Eater in the Link era is an abundance of free Link material material in any deck that can make a high level monster, which is a lot of decks. And that coupled with its abuse in synchro hand disruption decks, and the abundance of clarity that a number of cards had gone from okay or worthless to broken in the Link era, are ultimately what led to it being banned. And you could tell from the ban list that this card was banned on. The February 2018 ban list also included the banning of Dandelion and Gofu, as well as the limits to Firewall and Grinder Golem. Yeah. Grinder Golem, a card that had previously been used as Inferno Tempest OTKs, and that's it, had suddenly become game warpingly strong once Link Summoning hit the game. Level Eaters, just in a similar position. Now, it did have a few other cute utilities that I suppose I can mention. It being a dark attribute meant that it worked well with Allure to add consistency to the Dark Synchro deck. It being level 1 did make it a valid target for 1 for 1 if you already had access to your level 1 tuners. And one time I milled Level Eater off of tuning after adding quick draw synchron and it turned an unplayable hand into full quasar combo. That last one's not important, but it does kind of highlight how much impact an extra body for synchro summoning can be, let alone link climbing, right? Copium? I don't know. Hell, it's versatile enough that I wouldn't be surprised if I've completely forgot to mention another aspect of its play throughout the game. So if you are aware of one, feel free to let me know in the comments this bug definitely has a history to it. Overall, Level Eater is the epitome of the toolbox deck in my eyes. A small bug used in combo with multiple other parts that independently aren't very strong, but come together to make some fierce end boards. An unassuming card that doesn't seem insane on your first read, but when it's pushed to its limits, it is a card that can make some of the craziest boards you'll ever see in Yu-Gi-Oh. But hey, at least it could never be tributed for Cannon Soldier. Can you imagine how degenerate that would have been? <laughs> and so, that is our look at Yu-Gi-Oh single card history, Level Eater. Stay tuned for our next video, and feel free to suggest some cards to review or what type of video you'd like to see. Don't forget to like, and as always, subscribe to YGO Strats, so you too can become a true duelist.